Welcome to Greater Good Radio Hawaii, where we develop tomorrow's leaders by bringing you up close and personal with today's top business people. Greater Good Radio Hawaii is dedicated to social entrepreneurship. I'm your host, Evan Leong, and with me is my co-host, Carrie Leong. Mahalo, Evan. Today's guest is Terrence George, Vice President and Executive Director of the Harold K. L. Castle Foundation. He also serves on the board of the Entrepreneurs Foundation of Hawaii and the National Kidney Foundation of Hawaii. Please welcome to Greater Good Radio, Terrence George. Welcome to our show, Terrence. Oh, thank you very much. Delighted to be here, Carrie. So you have an interesting story about how you got into the field of helping people. Could you share that with our listeners, please? I sure could. Um, After finishing school at Punahou in 1976 and going on to Stanford University, um, I kind of wondered why I was there and fell into a small volunteer program called Volunteers in Asia, which is headquartered at Stanford, set up by social entrepreneurs, about 40 years ago, and it gave students both during their undergraduate years and after they graduate an opportunity to teach and live in uh, in, in an Asian country. And I got the opportunity to spend six months in Sumatra as an English teacher to help nurses and doctors keep up with the latest literature on public health. And it completely turned around my ideas of what I wanted to do. Um, It humbled me when I came in I was very clear about what's right and what's wrong with the world, uh, pretty much on the politically radical side. And it began to see more of the gray issues. Here was an authoritarian government that was investing heavily in public health and uh, primary education. And it caused me to go back to Stanford, work on international relations, so I could figure out as an American and a resident of Hawaii how I might be able to give back to other parts of the world um, and in the end, they gave way, gave back way more than I ever received. Are you able to share with us what you saw when you went to Sumatra? Oh, gosh, yeah. Uh, I was in a province of two million people. There was one gynecologist and one main paved road. Uh, so that meant for most women, if they had difficulties in labor, they needed to borrow all the money that they had in order to take a speedboat up to the capital city where that gynecologist was based. So I learned about how difficult life was for a lot of people, but I also learned how people had learned to support each other and uh, get through some of the difficulties in life. I also found out that the poorer people were, the more generous they were. And I remember one day in particular, way deep in the jungle um, on a river trip with uh, specialist doctors to go see people in the countryside, I had an opportunity to wander around on the other side of the river, and there was a couple that invited me to come into their home, which was built only with bamboo. All their possessions were in a small cardboard suitcase, except for a radio, and they gave me basically everything they had to give, which was tea and um, fruit, and I was just touched by that generosity. So what path were you on prior to going on this um, adventure in Sumatra? Was it like iBanking, or what were you thinking about doing? Well, I started as a music major at Stanford and figured that I'd probably end up doing law or something like that. Um, But after that, I very quickly moved to international relations, which is a brand new field and allowed for true interdisciplinary education, pulling in just about any discipline you wanted. Um, And I just really focused a lot on Southeast Asia, on economic and political development in Asia, and the U.S.'s role in providing aid and assistance to developing countries. So after you came back and you started studying uh, international relations, then where did that path take you? Well, it was fun because here I am coming back to Hawaii telling my dad, Dad, I know you've invested a lot in my education at Stanford, and what I've decided I want to do is get fluent in the Indonesian language, Bahasa Indonesia. Uh, It's an important country, and uh, it's fascinating, and by learning that language, I can talk to another 150 million people in the world. And, of course, he's probably toting up everything that he and my mom had saved up to send me there and thinking, my gosh, I wish the guy was studying Japanese or Chinese or business, and here he is interested in Southeast Asia and helping people. But in the end, I think by following my own passion, I was able to carve out a vocation that was meaningful for me. I was also influenced by a mentor named Dwight Clark, who was head of this volunteer program, who lived very simply. And he taught me that if you've learned to simplify and reduce your wants and simplify your needs, then your vocational possibility could expand exponentially. And guess what? That means you can be an entrepreneur and afford to fail. Because if basically you're, you're, 
you have what I saw many Indonesians not having, which was enough food to eat, basic health care, and a roof over your heads, then, you know, you could focus on what Maslow says is the search for meaning. And I was able to search, focus on that. And everything else really fall, fell into place after that. So that's an interesting topic because it seems that you got to that perspective pretty early in life. A lot of people need to get through that eagle stage or the stage where they're earning a, a substantial amounts of income before they can get near that self-actualization period. I was really fortunate that way. Um, I had a lot of friends who went into law school and medical school, and they found a way to give back sort of after the fact. And what I was able to do was to sort of create a a work career for myself in which my community work and my work work were one and the same. And so I've been really fortunate. And right now, of course, I feel like I have one of the best jobs in Hawaii because I get to wake up every morning and say, what can I do now in this position to help invest Mr. Harold Kale Castle's money in making Hawaii a better place? And that's a lot of fun because I get to meet some of the most dedicated, smart, passionate um people who are unwilling to give up on trying to really turn the corner on a particular social or environmental problem. 